So first up, we're going to uh, run the setup.sh with an install directory equal to app bobj. And we're off. So exciting watching in a command line, isn't it? Yes. Actually, that was pretty responsive for a little bit of VM. You know, and that actually brings up a good point. I, I, I built this VM with four CPUs and four gigs of RAM because, you know what? BI4 is still huge on 64-bit. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Is Australian in here? I don't see it. Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> Sorry. Kangaroo. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and go with an English install. Yeah. And uh, I, I already gave it the optional argument in the setup on where I want it to live, so it's already prefixed this install with the app bobj folder. And hit enter to continue. In uh, presumably behind the scenes, it's checking to make sure I've got writes and I'm good to go in that destination folder. Ever so briefly. So here's the here's the scary part, but it's not really all that scary. You know, the, the first thing it's going to tell us here is um, this is not a supported OS, and we knew that when we got started. The second is that it identified that there's no um, bundled database, and and that's okay. Um, we're going to let the installer drop a, a build for us. Um, I just totally lost my thread. So if there's any other prerequisites here that are missing, they're apparently all fulfilled based on the steps that we've taken so far and uh, what comes out of CentOS 5.6 64-bit out of the gates. So, I'm going to hit enter to continue. All right, a little bit of uh, license warning goodness. And a little more. And now I want to key code, and, and uh, I, I'm not actually going to show you all this. Language packs. So we can obviously get Australian in here if we can find it. No, still no Australian, but um, we're going to go with just English today. Hit enter. Um, two options here, user install. Um, I, I always go with a system installation. I want um, business objects to start when the system boots up. Easiest to maintain that way. It's uh, lights out, pages on kind of activity. Um, for today... I don't know. Do you agree? Should we just do a full install and let let it ride? Mm, I think so. All right. So full install, what's that going to be? That's going to be Tomcat, Business Object Services, yep. and okay, IBM, see. that IBM DB2 because it's not MySQL anymore. Mm. We're going to install and use default database. So in this circumstance, you know, we're we're running with just a single box. We're not going to do distributed deployment. So as with the database, um, we're going to roll with Tomcat. And uh, a couple of new little tweaks. You know, I think, I want to say the later versions of SB3 had subversion options. Am I crazy? Am I making that up? Um, yeah, you had to install Last Cycle Manager separately, but it bundled subversion in, yeah. So we got LCM. And, and here's where it should really start looking a, a lot like the old school install again. Um, we're going to give it a known name, and I'm going to call this EVTech 3. Use the, the same old standard to see a port. See a CMS port. It's going to live to be the same. And I'm going to give this some passwords. Now, anybody notice something new here? Yeah, the cluster key. Cluster key. Any idea what that's doing? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the cluster... <laughs> Sorry, rhetorical question. The cluster key is uh, is actually pretty cool. It's actually giving us... Uh, new encryption between the CMS servers. Um, I, I'm I don't know for sure, but I want to also hope that that means you can't arbitrarily just add a CMS cluster node. But I've yet to uh, find that in the documentation. But from what I did read, uh, that is uh, keeping that communication encrypted. Excellent. There's our first newbie. Uh, since my sequels dropped out of the equation we're looking for the default port for db2 server on linux i never thought i'd hear myself say that 
really. Mm. <laughs> uh, port configurations for Tomcat. I, I don't know about you, but uh, I I always hate the default port of 8080. Um, mm. I mean, so often I'll just use the default HTTP container for Tomcat and not plug IIS or, or Apache into it. Do you run any of their web servers when you're installing business objects with Tomcat? No, nah, we'll just normally deploy Tomcat um, by itself or, or as part of the business always install. So. And quite often we just leave it as port 8080. So let's make all our lives easier and drop that so we don't mm-hmm. have to qualify a port anymore, right? Yeah, you just need to make sure you do that through um, through all your other installs. Indeed. Uh, as well, so I can catch you out. So I'm going to go ahead and take the defaults for LCM. I love LCM, so I'm going to keep it alive. Mm. And it's worth noting that in BI4, that's now bundled into the install. So yeah. previously in XI3, you had to install it separately. It is. Now the solution manager is spanking new as well. Yep. Uh, but we don't. We're not going to configure this agent today. Or, or actually, I just told it no, and it still asked me for the uh, information. No, you told it yes. <laughs> I, I hit two, the button two. So I presumed it assumed that was a no. No, two is a yes. If you go back, Did control I? B. Yeah, yeah. Look, see. Oh, oh. The default is no. And this is where you read all the prompts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do not configure. <laughs> we're not going to interscope. Uh, integrate Interscope Enterprise Manager in this case. You should press 1 there. I'm going to press 1. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> and hey, look at that. We're ready to go. Press Enter to continue. And and now we begin that long process. And this is through the magic of video editing where you're going to see this process go at the speed of light. And with the magic of video editing, that 45-minute uh, install was just compressed to about 6 seconds. So, um, at the tail end of the install, um, since we've we've now run this as a um, the, the service account that we want business objects to run under, um, just like with XI three one, they've given us that handy script that we can use to run as root, so we can run this as a um, rental load of the system. So, I'm going to hit enter to continue. We finish the install and we can bag out. It's going to drop us back to the shell. I'm going to exit, which is going to drop me back to root. And now I'm going to drop in that command. Whoops. Oh, you know what? I've already done this install once on this box, and the script is already there, and I didn't clean it up nicely, but that's okay. Because um, the symbolic link was already there. So we're good to go. So we should be able to go look in uh, Etsy and at D and see our... Uh, SAP Bob J Enterprise XI40 script. Um, awesome. so, so let's do a quick check. Um, what are some things we might be looking for? Tomcat, right? It's up and running. And note, it is running as our BO admin user, as planned. Uh, let's do another check. Let's see, uh, what, 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 Webby? Ooh. There we go. Just had to get the right name right. Still running as BO admin. The PID for that guy. And then uh, we can see that the web intelligence processing server is running on evtech3.ebtinternet.com. So the obvious miss on our part was changing to port 80 is a restricted port on Linux. Windows, it's a piece of cake, right? Um, there, There's no discrimination. So there's actually a couple of solutions to make port 80 work for Tomcat. Um, one, you know, you can run Tomcat as the root user, and that's that's generally not going to be a secure option. Given that it's a sandbox anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm assuming you're not going to put out an unsupported OS uh, in a standard business object deployment, but um, simply put, um, you would drop back out to your root user. We'll go back to our uh, app Bob J, oops, uh, SAP Bob J folder, and we would stop Tomcat through the uh, shutdown script where it was running as BO admin, and then as the root user, run the Tomcat startup script, Tomcat startup.sh, and voila, Tomcat is running as root. Again, not necessarily recommended. Um, option two is run um, a couple of handy 
quick scripts that we've compiled here and we'll put in the show notes. Um, this simply uses IP tables, that firewall, um, and is going to redirect that incoming port traffic on 8080 from uh, the server XML to port 80 for that incoming HTTP request. The key here, Josh, is way back earlier in our build, we went ahead and told the installer to set the build to go to port 80 in server XML. So you got to change that. Do you want to see that part? Yeah, I want to see that part. All right. So that's an easy, quick, quick, quick change. So um, I'm currently in my app, BobJ, SAP BobJ folder. I need to drill down a little bit further into Tomcat. Conf. And I'm going to VI server.xml. Now, I'm, I'm kind of old school, maybe. I, I always like to have a backup of my config files before I make a change. So I would just do a quick cp-p server.xml and change... Um, uh, this to server.xml.ridge. I don't know, maybe put a date on it so that I've got something to roll back to. So I'm going to now modify server.xml. And I'm going to do a quick find for 80. So it's right here in the connector port. I've already changed it to 8080, but um, you would see based on our install, it's going to look like 80. We're going to hit insert and change it back to 8080 save the file, and now restart Tomcat, and this guy will be running on 8080, and those IP tables rules that we've added for the port redirect now enable us to work. And let's give that a quick test. evtech3.evtinternet.com BOE Info View There we go! Mm -hmm. We've got it up and running. Right. <laughs> we did it! So sort I of like about business objects, Eric. You always learn something new. Indeed. Always learning. <laughs> a quick login. There's shows a new the BI launchpad. Don't yeah. you love how they um, rename the uh, web apps <laughs> to match what they call the applications? <laughs> we did it. So you know, on the initial load, it's it's pulling things in a Tomcat cache, I'm sure. But you know, I gotta say, in my initial swags at this, I felt like the Linux deployment was faster than the Windows deployment. Equivalent mm. size. I had four CPUs and four gigs of RAM in each. And it definitely smells and feels faster. I don't, I don't know. I, I would love to see it under some kind of a load test to uh, give some empirical evidence there. Mm. So that's it. We've installed BI4 on Linux. CentOS 5.6. Unsupported, but a fantastic test bed to uh, get to know the Linux deployment of business objects a little bit better. Mm. So we're going to do something next time and uh, continue this series. What do you think we should do? See, I'm really interested in actually setting up. Um, well, you know, first of all, we can expand the the um, the cluster to include an additional server, so we could actually have two two um, servers running. We could also um, deploy the web tier onto a separate Linux box and shut down Tomcat on this one, so we can then actually uh, route all the web requests through. A, a, dedicated web application. And then you could even look at potentially splitting Apache off um, from that and running Apache, then Tomcat, then business objects. Mm, so transition this to a distributed architecture. I like it. Mm. So it sounds like we can uh, see what we've got in store for our next few podcasts. All right. Well, Josh, yeah. thanks. This was a fun first launch, man. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, cool. Well, let's circle back up and do this again and uh, continue the build out of our BI4 cluster. Great. Looking forward to it. All right. Take care, Thanks, my friend. Sir. Good night. Cheers. Bye. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by EV Technologies. Visit us on the net at savethecms.com.